Hi, welcome back to World of the Psychic. Together we shall cast ourselves into the future. Seen any aliens lately? This is a part of America we never get to see. Are you by chance referring to the legend of the Loch Ness Monster? A ball of twine that weighs 19,000 pounds. What is this, nerd porn? It is about the Templar treasure, but it's also about other things. Uh, conspiracy theories, urban legends, and other myths that are true. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to the travel oddities podcast. Well, well, well I, the just, I was watching you hold this Iron Man figure like you couldn't wait to. I am Iron Man. Yes. <laughs> yes. By the way, I did see Civil War. How was it? Really good. Iron Man armor. Combat ready. It is combat ready. And Iron Man takes a, a lick and then keeps on ticking. He's like a in time this movie. Yes. All right. Yes. I so will say that's this. That's all I want to hear because I still haven't seen all it. All I'm saying is Spider Man makes you kind of pee pee a little bit. <laughs> does he take us to pee pee city? He does, does he take Pants us city? to pee pee pants city. So. So tonight's show, we are going to be talking about the Sloss Furnaces of, of Birmingham, Alabama. We already that, announced that. Yeah, we did. But I just kind of wanted to say it's apparently. Super haunted. Con- uh, yes. And do I have permission to rip the ghost adventure guys to shreds tonight? We, you can totally do that when we get into the, okay. the show. Basically. Right. Oh, I know. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there yet. I'm just saying I, I want permission to lay waste. To no, feel ghost free. Adventures. Yeah. But so. so it, it, it's pretty cool. I, yeah, it's really cool. I'm, I personally, I took a step back and thought, okay, Brett should have a hard time calling BS on this, just in general. Mm-hmm. Um, just because of the history. Right. Every ghost hunting show on the planet has been there. Been yes. there. So, um, not really... I didn't see anything that just, like, blew my socks off or anything, but at the same time... What? Why no, is that funny? Blew my socks off. Something like a... Well, no, that's something a 40-plus-year-old man would say. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Blew my right. socks off. How old are you now, Brett? 39. 39. Oh, you're getting yeah. there. Almost. Yeah. You're almost to the top of the hill. Almost. I mean, they say it gets better with age. Um, I'm not measuring my success with your deterioration. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you didn't really start drinking the kombucha tea until you hit about 42. I am Iron Man. You think you are. With the, as much kombucha tea. But anyway, yes, very interesting. Lots of history. We're talking paranormal activity that started in the late 1800s. So it, it isn't something that just kind of, I mean, it, yes, it's been handed down from generation to generation. But it didn't pop up overnight. Right. It's not an urban legend with no history involved. It's not a haunted bed and breakfast. <laughs> haunted, haunted. Hey, we there may be some legitimate haunted bed and breakfast. We haven't gotten there yet, but well, not in this part of the woods, neck of the uh, dude, area. You just you gotta call bullshit all the time. I'm not calling. I didn't call bullshit you're on call, anything. I, I know exactly what you're calling bullshit on. What? Um, the Stone Lion Manor in. In Stone Lion Manor. I don't know what it's, it's called. It's an inn. Yeah, there's no I am kind of in. because, and, and we'll get maybe we'll get to that one someday. I doubt it. We might. But anyway, no, it's it's all about Sloss Furnaces today and uh, barbecue, as far as I'm concerned. So I guess we just need to get straight into the Sloss Furnaces. Like every time you say it, or every time I say it, my brain wants to say sh- Schlock, which is the it's a horror movie, like a B horror movie from way back when, or it makes me automatically want to say sloshage. Sloshage. So, yes, let's get right into the Sloss Furnaces of Birmingham, Alabama. Okay, so the Sloss Furnaces, it's a national historic landmark in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, it operated as a blast furnace from 1892 until 1971. Now, the reason that it falls under the haunted category is um, there were a lot of workers that either died or were severely injured while that thing was up and running. Uh, yeah, I, I was kind of doing a little bit of research. Okay. And 
it's one of those things where you don't want to stand too close to this or you don't want to put your hand close to that or it'll just suck you right up into it. Because there's a, not only is it a furnace, but there's a lot of cavernous areas. I mean, it's just, it's a creepy, creepy, creepy place. Yeah, just from the pictures alone, it's creepy. Yeah. You tack on the fact that, you know, these many, this many people died here. Mm-hmm. You know, this is where old Willie lost his arm or, you know, had his face burned off or, or lost his Willie or lost his Willie to a <laughs> smelting accident. <laughs> he, he instantly became the Alabama eunuch. Uh, <laughs> So after it closed, it became one of the first industrial sites in the U.S. to be preserved and restored for public use, which is different. So that was what I was going to get at. I was like, this may be not one of our typical destinations because it's not really designed for you to go and tour, but it is kind of a... It actually is It's what designed for you to go and tour. That's really cool. So it's non-operational anymore. Non-operational since 1971. 1971. Um, in... 1981, the furnaces were designated a national landmark. So, Cool. Now, when do I get to get into this ghost adventure stuff? Well, let's... No? Okay, go I, ahead. I say we get a little bit through okay. the history yes. of the furnaces, and then we can ta- start talking about the paranormal aspect. Okay. Um, and then you can rip on, on those guys. Okay, go ahead. So the site currently serves as a museum... A concert and festival venue. And annually, they have a Halloween haunted attraction called the Sloss Fright Furnace held at the site. Now, that's pretty cool. Now, that's a case of really kind of cashing in on the haunt a little bit. I agree 100%. I mean, if you're going to do it, don't turn the, you know, the neighborhood garage into a haunted house. Why not turn a haunted, supposed haunted furnace into a haunted house? I'm all. I I always say I. I think that's going to be my get her done. Is I'm all in. I okay. I take offense to something you just said. What you said a haunted furnace, a supposed haunted. I'm furnace. sorry. We don't know yet. We haven't got there. I understand that, but you're all that. That is a way of uh, calling bullshit, throwing with, shade without. It was a little bit of a sleight of hand. It was a bit. <laughs> it's it's like saying it's a haunted it's a quote unquote okay, haunted well, furnace okay uh, a furnace that's re- that's reportedly haunted okay that works is that better that does work because that's kind of what I meant that I one thing you will find with me is if we're talking hauntings unless there's proof that perhaps there's some folly there and it, it's a legend started by a kid that wrote a diary that. Submitted the store. Oh, wait, that's Emily's Bridge. I'm sorry, Lobo. If you're out there, Emily's Bridge, not scary. Sorry. It's a story told by a child. Anyway, so with hauntings, I kind of get a little bit more the heebie-jeebies. Because the thing with ghosts, as compared to Sasquatch or Mm -hmm. cryptids, you're not supposed to see a ghost. Right. You're supposed to see a cryptid. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you're sitting there looking at the water waiting for something to pop up and it doesn't happen, you know, there's a million reasons why, oh, well, it's it, maybe it's down on the other end of the holler. Oh, well, maybe it's not hungry right now. With ghosts, there's a repeated pattern with ghosts. Okay. So this story, I'm not going to call bullshit right away. I'm not even going to try. Okay. So. All right. So. Are you, are you done with your one word answers that you get on to me for? I apologize, Brett. Okay. Thank you. For my one word answers. I will say, however, that you never let me get a word in edgewise, so okay. we'll we'll kinda have to throw that back at you. So <laughs> the facility produced twenty four thousand tons of high quality iron, uh, iron during its first year of operation. That's a lot of iron. Iron. And uh, in 1886, Sloss retired and sold the company to a group of investors who reorganized it in 1899 as the Sloss Sheffield Steel and Iron Company. Did we mention that Sloss Schloss, Schloss was a, wasn't he a colonel or something or a, a military officer? I saw something about that, but I'm not 100% sure. Crap. Um, 
Sorry, Birmingham, Alabama. We forgot to tell you all about Mr. Schloss and his Schlossage factory. <laughs> his Schlossages. Okay, so um, during this period, the company built 48 small cottages for African-American workers mm -hmm. near the downtown uh, furnace, a community that became known as Sloss Quarters or just the Quarters. So a lot of bad blood building up. Well, yeah, it's the Deep South. Right. I mean, we're talking Alabama. Around them times, we had slaves. Yeah, it, it, we were out of. The, oh, we were out of slavery by then. Yeah, in Alabama. But it's it's still still a, a very volatile time. Right. In Birmingham, Alabama, there was still a <laughs> lot of bad blood. We'll just. Leave it at that. When we had the uh, the colored folk down in the quarters, if you will. <clears throat> yes. So uh, due to the constant high temperatures, more than 120 degrees, and terrible working conditions, workers referred to the factory as literally a living hell. And some are said to be trapped in this living hell. <laughs> that is the case, yes. Now, accidents happen. Yes. In a factory... It, it, this stuff happens, to, that kind of thing happens today. Oil wells. People get killed on oil wells all the time. Yeah, but this factory is um, a little bit more intense. So there was a notoriously hard graveyard shift foreman named James Slag Wormwood. Okay. By the way, coolest damn name we've oh, come yeah. across yet. Yeah, and I would tell everybody my middle name was Slag. But Wormwood... Wormwood, yeah. So he was reportedly the cause of horrendous working conditions in order in to increase productivity and impress the management. During his reign, 47 workers were have said to have lost their lives, 10 times more than any other shift in the history of the furnace. So he wasn't he wasn't up for the safety awards. Like Foreman Wormwood didn't get the safety the safety bonus. No, OSHA wasn't around yet, but if they were, <laughs> he would probably get the death penalty I mean, from OSHA. Look, if I'm thinking of a place to work, back I guess back then you didn't go, you know, there wasn't like a Yelp review or like a review on what's it like to work at the Sloss Furnaces. But, you know, it, chances are in a, a town like as small as this area that if 47 people died, I'm working at the Pingly Wiggly. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's not that wasn't the end of it. So there were a lot of others who lost their ability to to work due to accidents, mishaps. There was even a recorded explosion in the small blowing engine house in 1888 that left six workers blind. Yeah. There were no breaks, no holidays, only the furnace. So the to add to that story, they had I think if I'm not mistaken, Went and bought a, like a, a salvage part at a junkyard that was kind of close to the part they needed, but not quite the part. You mm -hmm. know how it is. Right. You just make it work. You weld it together and you hit the start button because in production, time is money. Right. So the cheapest way to get it done, I've worked, I mean, hell, I've worked on an assembly line. The cheapest way to get it done to keep the, the assembly line or whatever the line going, that's what you did. So. They replaced this, I think it was a valve is what they replaced, mm -hmm. welded it back. The guys went to turn it on, and it blew up, blinded them, and nearly, it, from what I said, we heard the reports where they looked like their skin had been boiled. Right. So, I mean, really, I don't know. Really ugly stuff. Yes. Very nasty. So, apparently one of the most horrifying tales of somebody being injured, killed, hurt there. Um, happened in 1971 when uh, the night before the plant closed, Samuel Blumenthal, the Sloss Night Watchman, who uh, was taking a look about, found himself face to face with the most frightening thing he'd ever seen. He described it as simply evil, half man, half demon, who tried to push him up the stairs. When Blumenthal refused, the monster began to beat him with its fists. So... The plant's not even closed yet, and you've got demons running around, um, not to mention the ghosts mm -hmm. of the at least, what, uh, approximately 100 people who died over the years. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, there's, 
there's a wide range of paranormal events that are have been said to have taken place here. Yes. Which, if you're of the mind of, you know, taking a full advantage of your cryptid, your haunting, mm-hmm. your reason for people to stop into your town. Right. I'm all for, but it, uh, man, I'm just thinking haunted, uh, haunted house. Yeah. Right at this place where you've got little kids coming. It's, it's hard to make it fun. It seems like maybe they might, um, because be stirring up the wrong kind of problems. You know, it's not like, you know, a haunted house where there's the ghost of a child that died from, I don't know, tuberculosis. Everyone that died here, it wasn't like, oh, Bobby Joe had a heart attack. Like, even even sl- even Slag, mm-hmm. he fell from Big Alice. One of the furnaces they called Big Alice. The largest furnace, Big Alice, yeah. Into And basically did a Terminator 2 <laughs> and fell into the, the hot ore and was given a thumbs up as he's going down into the hot ore. Oh, wait, no, that's... That's Terminator. Yeah, that was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah. But he basically did the same thing. He fell face first into that furnace. But because he wasn't metal, metal endoskeleton covered with human tissue, mm-hmm. uh, he didn't survive. No, he he also him. didn't have the dexterity to he do He did not have the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something tells me he was screaming all the way down. What would it be like to, to be... To fall into hot ore. Uh, It can't be good. Now, there are a few instances where people did get, where they tried to save people, and they would pull out bones and, like, their head and, and and be able to salvage, like, some pieces. I'm sorry. If I'm the, the, the family of John Boy, just throw the rest of it in there. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to dig a hole for a, a head. It'd be the smallest coffin ever. It would be. It'd be like you bury him in a. I don't know what's what's something big in it, like a five gallon bucket. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so again, supposed to be super haunted. Mm-hmm. There are a whole lot of stories, um, but why don't you regale us with some of your your <laughs> what, what are we calling this? Your research. My research. So. Ghost Adventures, um, you're familiar with those guys. Uh, they have show on Travel Channel. I don't know if they still have it or not. But Season 1, Episode 5, they did a, and that's some time back, they did an episode on the Sloss Furnaces, and they went down into it. They talked to some people that had been violently attacked, talked to a night, um, a night security guard. Okay. And he didn't believe in ghosts, but after he worked there, he did. They go down in, and of course, it's like, ooh, what's that? Uh, I'm just like, really? It it didn't make it scarier for me. It annoyed me. Okay. Ghost adventure guys are fakes, man. They're charlatans. I don't, I don't like them. I'm not going to say they're fakes, because it's a reality show. Let's be honest, there's not a whole lot of reality in reality shows. Right. But uh, the the presentation, the confrontation. I was hit. Where? You know, like, let's jerk the camera real quick. Go. Oh, it's it's all meant for the the dramatic jump scare right, right. before the commercial. And now, does it make you want to get in the car and go there? Yeah. If you're into that kind of thing, I don't know if it if they make me want to go there. Okay. They are the Guy Fieri of the paranormal. Like, did you want to go to Nick's before Guy Fieri did Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives? Um, yeah, actually, I didn't know that he had ever been there until after it already. Okay, went. but think of restaurants that he's been to that you're like, man, I could go there. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. Like, I'm not going to br- I'm going to, if I want to attract people that are into the haunted. Mm-hmm. Typically, places they go to are tourist-friendly, right? for the most part. It attracts tourists. That's the job. Yeah, I mean, I can't argue with that. It, and then they want us to stare at the screen and wait for 
us to see what they see, and then they see something that uh, us, the, by the naked eye of the television, can't see. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just think it's, I don't know, I liked ghosts better when they, I didn't have these ghost reality shows every five seconds trying to tell me what's haunted. Because I think once it gets in your head that something's haunted, then it becomes a reality. Like, you feel touches. You feel your 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 brain turns on those senses. Uh, yeah, I, I don't disagree with that, but I, honestly... If you don't believe, you don't receive. It's a lot like Santa Claus. If you don't believe in ghosts, you're not phased by it. But if you believe in ghosts, you're going to feel something. T- it's You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. But my point is, as far as these ghost hunting shows go, mm-hmm. it, it really just boils down to we have to convince you mm-hmm. that something is going to happen after these commercials. Right. And Te- they have to tease the break. Right. And it, it's always, you know, the camera guy dropped his flashlight and scared us. It's never, oh, I have, you know, 47 seconds of video of Slimer from Ghostbusters. But here's the thing. Their camera their camera guy, I can't remember his name. Uh, the, the host is Zach Baggins or Baggins or something like that. But anyway, their camera guy came out sometime some time ago and basically said a lot of the stuff was staged for television. Of course, why wouldn't it be? Well, not only that, but if you've got a producer and he's like, okay, we recorded 12 hours of footage and we got nothing, we're going to make something happen. Something needs to happen. It's like Mythbusters. Okay, we couldn't prove that it did or didn't, but we're going to make it blow up. Right. I, I mean, we can't prove if, you know, if you put that much gunpowder in a gas tank, it's going to gonna do this. Right. So we're just going to keep cramming stuff in there until, until we get the does. result yeah. we're looking for. So, moving on to the Sloss Furnaces, that was kind of the research I came up across. Uh, I wanted to see um, if there was anything that, because you get tired of watching like the, because the, I'm kind of the YouTube guy, the, the cheesy like 20 second videos or one minute you know, these corny, like, technologically starved videos. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to find something maybe with a little bit of substance. So you said, look up, you said Ghost Smashers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Dude, there, there's, there's a hundred of them. <laughs> so I looked up Ghost Smashers, a.k.a. Ghost Adventures. And I was just like, golly, I, I can tell you the point in my life where I, I started to question paranormal investigation. All right. I went on a ghost tour. Okay. At Fort Reno. I did not know this. Um, did you not go with us? Mm-mm. You didn't go? No. Uh, went to a ghost tour there twice. So I knew some information the second time. Okay. So get there, get to this house. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to get off subject here. Uh, get to this house that's on the property that's supposedly haunted by a girl, a little girl that sits on the roof. Okay. I knew this going in. It was the same paranormal group. They didn't remember me. Okay. So get to this house, and they're like, let's just take a minute to walk around. You can take pictures. You can do this. If you feel anything, let us know. You see anything, let us know. So everybody gets done. They're like, all right, let's 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 regroup. Anybody, anything? Oh, well, people are like, oh, I thought I had this. And I was like, is there a, a little girl that was supposed to live here? And they're like, Anybody else? Does anybody, you know, it's like that kid's yeah. like, I'm like, uh, given the right answers, I'm like, anybody, anybody. I was like, because I, they're like, oh, okay. They finally got to me. They're like, and what was it you saw? So there, uh, yeah, there's, was there a little girl that lives here? Oh, yeah, supposedly. All right, um, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. I'm like, really? But the minute they felt something, everybody's like, oh. but if it's like, I'm not supposed to have that intuition. Oh, okay. So I, that's the po- the point in my life where I went, hmm, paranormal investigators. Hmm. I don't know. I lived my entire life not ever being a part of a paranormal investigation and believing wholeheartedly that when something moved and I didn't have any idea how it moved, that it was something else. Mm-hmm. I don't need a, sci- a scientist, a ghostbuster, to tell me otherwise. So that's the issue I have. I want to experience it for myself. I hear you. 
Schloss Furnaces seems like it would be a place, if there was going to be a place that's haunted, it would be the Schloss Furnaces. With all the death there, I I can't disagree with you at all. And how is it, how, you know, think about it. How are our haunted houses not just, or not haunted houses, how are hospitals just not haunted to the, the brim? I mean, <laughs> people die there all the time. Yeah. A hospital's not haunted until it's it's empty. Well, I would, personally, and I don't know, never had a a real... You ever had anything happen to you where you're like, what was that? I can't explain it. Well, I have, but I, you know, I don't, I, I'm not a ghost smasher. That's not what I do. <laughs> you know, I mean, if the ghost is hot enough, I'd smash it. Okay. But I would, I would assume that mm-hmm. a hospital, for the most part, like a current hospital, the intent of the people there is to help people. So just, it, just because you pass away doesn't mean you passed away in agony, in terror, mm-hmm. in fear for your life, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I would think it would be a more peaceful passing. True. Yeah. So I would say an insane ins- asylum or prison or, or you know, having a furnace, a furnace. Yeah. Kind of face melted off in a furnace. Right. Would, Something tells me you're, you know, your you're, blood pressure is a little high at that point. Yeah. You? All right. So there are a lot of videos mm-hmm. going around. There aren't a whole lot of stories, which I thought was kind of lame. Uh, not lame. I just, you know, I like when there's some, some stories. Right. I, I don't want to see a video. Mm-hmm. But there are some really interesting videos where you see what looks like an apparition or something in a dark corner that looks like it has eyes mm-hmm. watching. So there's some creepy stuff. Yeah, there's some stuff, but it's I kind of like to hear firsthand accounts because videos, I mean, let's be honest. It's kind of easy to fake some of this stuff. We talked about that. I know. We still don't have a logo. We know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, <laughs> God, geez, we don't even have a logo, so we know, we, well, no, we, I don't know that we could fake a video. I, I know for a fact we couldn't fake a video. Um, if we can fake a video and we don't have a logo, we're doing it wrong. Right. Uh, so, meh. So, I, I would say the one question for me mm-hmm. when I'm going to this place is, mm-hmm. I don't want the half demon, half man, or ghost, or whatever, attacking me. Right. So I think it's probably time to get into the defense against the dark arts. Yes. Be warned. It is my job to arm you against the foulest creatures known to wizard kind. You may find yourselves facing your worst fears in this room. Know only that no harm can befall you whilst I am here. I must ask you not to scream. <laughs> Again, I say a proton pack would would be the best defense. Okay, so again, I went to the lore okay. to find out. How do you defend yourself against negative energy? I found a solution. Black onyx. Wear some. If you're going, go get yourself a little piece of black onyx. Stick not, it in your pocket. Not the group that had that song from the 90s slam onyx slam da, 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 da. Okay. let the boys be boys do you remember that yes i do now okay thanks for reminding me of that wonderful music that might have to be our that might just have to be the the outro the outro onyx okay we'll we'll discuss okay but yeah so that that that's my well. Own. Native Americans would smudge. Would do a smudging. Brett with sage. Okay, there are at least fifty thousand haunted locations in mm-hmm. the United States alone. Right. We we have to parse this stuff up. There's only so many ways to defend yourself against these creatures. Well, I was I said proton pack right off the bat. Right. And put them in the ecto chamber. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Egon. Yo, Ray, tell him about the Twinkie. Uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I want to be scared. I do, too. I want to be touched by no. an angel. Negative. Or a demon. 
You don't want to be touched by a demon? Absolutely not. Why? Are you scared of the demons? No, I'm not scared. I'm just not interested in being touched by something that's reported as being pure evil. And see, I have an issue. I don't... <sighs> okay, being a spiritual person, mm-hmm. do you believe in pure evil? Uh, I don't want to press my luck. How's that? Okay. I don't know that I believe in pure evil. What type of path does a spiritual person take? I, um, I don't even know. What I mean, how do you avoid being in situations where you're face-to-face with pure evil? Well, I I don't know that it exists. Okay. But I... So you just call bullshit, basically. No, I'm not calling bullshit. I've never come face-to-face with pure evil. Right. At least I don't believe so. I mean, I mean if a demon came up to you and gave me an add a game. A what? Or an, not an add a game, but like a add a boy good game slap on the ass. I mean, what would you do? How would you know that it's a demon? I don't know. I would assume that you would have some sort of physical. Repulsion. Would you go to this place at night? Yes. Would you stay the night there? Mm, maybe. Okay, why why would you go there at night, but you wouldn't stay the night? I don't know. I'm, because you'd like to sleep in your own bed, or... That, that sounds nice. I mean, that's the thing. That's what keeps... It, to me, it's not like going to the Sloss Furnaces. Isn't, it's, it's less about being scared that I'm going to have a demon try to put his hand up my butt, and more about, I just don't want to sleep on a sleeping bag. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not, I, and, and my, my, th- the same goes for camping. I don't mind camping. Right. But I'd like to have at least an air mattress. I mean, I just have a bad back. <laughs> I, it, it's not about being scared to death because I think what happens is if you turn the lights out in here right now. Yes. Cause right now it's almost 10 o'clock mm-hmm. going on 10 o'clock our time. Right. And once your eyes start to relax, I remember sitting in, in the dark as a kid. Okay. And thinking I saw things and I would even put on, I would try to scare myself. I would play, I had a Halloween noise cassette and I would play that and, and sit in the dark and like, oops, pretend that I, or think that I saw things and things would manifest themselves and da da. So, so I think you're that, saying you had a very active imagination. Very active imagination. And you're calling bullshit on our entire show. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is I don't have a fear of staying at the Sloss Furnaces. I welcome the opportunity to get a, a good game tap on the butt from, you know, slag. Okay. You know? I don't, I wouldn't have a problem being there overnight. Mm-hmm. I don't think that I would sleep there. Because you couldn't rest? I'm, Again, is it more about comfort, like physically, or emotional comfort? I don't, I don't know. I would just think that I would be too excited to sleep, and whether that's just you know like just pin up anxiety or just excitement or because I think everyone would have kind of like this, like your adrenaline, even st- because the unknown. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you are, right? Unless you are a nihilist. That has no soul. Again, well, there we go with <laughs> again. That's those, never mind, those contradict themselves. You're going to have some type of anxiety. Whether it's, it's the fear of the unknown, it's a little bit chilly, it's, you know, you, there's no light, I can't see. I mean, there's things. Right. That play with your emotion. Play Absolutely. with your, your psyche. Agreed. I think. I'm not saying that you can hunt this place, but if I hear a noise I can't explain, you know, if I don't know there's a leaky pipe there, I'm not going to guess that the sound I heard is a leaky pipe. I could assume that it's a number of things. Right. So, what are you doing? Can I just, for a second? Yes. You're doing it again. I'm doing what? Right. Yes. Right. Again? You're staring at your laptop. I have no reason why. I don't know. You do, you're do. you doing the exact same thing to me. Okay, so. That I do when I have my phone and I'm like, Brett, yep. I would like to explain to you yeah. what I'm doing over here. 
Yeah. I'm producing the show. Cool. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at my smartphone. Right. Does your, is your smartphone connected to our soundboard? No, the, my smartphone connected to the finger bone. Okay. Is, <laughs> is your smartphone connected to our listener feedback from Anthony Shear? Well, does your computer inhibit you from saying, having complete sentences? Again, I will go back to the fact that when I talk, you cut me off. I didn't cut you off. Dude, if I say anything longer than a syllable when you're in, when you're I didn't on, cut you off. Uh, <laughs> when you're on your rant, if I say anything longer than a set, uh, than a single syllable, you cut me off. You okay. just keep talking. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead and talk. What would you like me to talk about? The show. Okay. No? No. You got nothing. I got nothing. I'm sorry. I'm full of piss and vinegar tonight. Yes. I'm 39 years old. You are an old, old man. I'm, you're 42. Me sitting across from you is me looking into my future. Do we want to talk a little bit about Birmingham, Alabama? Well, yeah, but you said something about feedback. We, I, that's We're not going to get there on my yet. list. We're okay. not there. Let's talk about Birmingham. What do you want to know about Birmingham, Alabama? Tell me something I don't know already. It's in Alabama. Well, I knew that. Instead of Birmingham, England, right? <laughs> Tell me something else I didn't know. All right, so Birmingham, Alabama, largest city in Alabama. Is it the capital of Alabama? Mobile. Uh, Maybe Mo- Mobile is the capital of Are Alabama. Are you sure? I'm 99.74% sure. So city population, about 210,000 people. Mm-hmm. Looks pretty cool. Uh, it's a, a lot of industrial type environment. So uh, it's not... I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I'm giving you every opportunity. Well, you're you're being a jerk face about it. How am I being a jerk face? Because I said you're being a jerk face. <laughs> so there's a whole lot of stuff to do as far as theater and that sort of stuff. You've got the Alabama Theater, which hosts film screenings, concerts, performances. You've got the um, Alice Stevens Center for Performing Arts. The Birmingham. Jefferson Convention Complex, the Children's Theater, the Carver Theater. They got a lot of theaters going on in downtown Birmingham. Birmingham? Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is the the pr- appropriate pronunciation? Birmingham. There's no ham. Birmingham, Alabama. No, I I'm not I'm not buying. Okay. I've got I'll tell you what. Okay. I'll I will ease your suffering. Okay. I see a guy flapping his his hands in the ocean, asking for help. I can't swim, but you swam all the way out there. So my non-swimming ass is going to come all the way out to the middle of the ocean and help you out with this. Okay, go for it. Here are ten fun facts about Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, my God. Are you okay, ready? Yes, fire away. Number one, the Birmingham metropolitan area, Coleman and Hoover included, is home to approximately 1.1 million people. Not small. No. Not by any stretch. Okay. Number two, Birmingham was the first city in the country to celebrate Veterans Day. Did you know that about Birmingham, Alabama? I did not. They put four before three. I don't know why. Number three, Birmingham's infamous Vulcan statue is the largest cast iron statue in the world, second only to the Statue of Liberty. Did you know that? Yes, I knew that. That was, I'm lying. I did not know that. You're like, yes, I knew that from playing cards against humanity. Uh, our city home to have, is home to a vast selection of vibrant local breweries, each with a unique flavor of their own with several ever growing lists of Birmingham brews. You're sure to find the perfect pint close to home. So they got a lot of your breweries there. Does your list include, include jazz? Uh, we're not there yet. Okay. That's Louisiana. Mm. Mm. Birmingham is truly an angler's paradise, which is why it came as no surprise to locals when Birmingham was voted America's bass capital by the readers of Bassmaster magazine. Are you sure it's not bass? No. Okay. Uh, Birmingham's nickname, the Magic City, did you know that? Yeah. Refers to a period of great growth in the 1870s and 1880s 
when the city seemed to grow so quickly, it appeared to have happened like magic overnight. I don't... Okay. Continue. Number seven. Got it. The nation's most successful regional magazine, Southern Living, is published in Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, okay, jazz. You said ja- you wanted jazz. Yes. Number eight. The Alabama Jazz Hall of Fame calls our city home as well which should come as no surprise with the jazz industry's deep roots and celebrated history in Birmingham, Alabama. Please continue. Number nine and ten should come as no surprise as well. Barbecue. With Birmingham's world-class musical talent, it should come as no surprise that Birmingham is the home to three stars from the infamous American Idol TV show. (laughs) Ruben Studdard, Taylor Hicks, and Bo Bice. All right. In number 10, the final fact, fun fact about Birmingham, Alabama. Hit me. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you prepared for what I'm about to unleash upon you? Yes. Number 10, in addition to the vast selection of local breweries, many are surprised by the number of vineyards and wineries in the greater Birmingham area. I would not have guessed that. We even have a wine trail. For Birmingham's wine enthusiast. <laughs> so there are, that was brought to you by Ross Bridge, a classic American resort town. All right. The top 10 facts, fun facts about Birmingham, Alabama. Why do you cringe when I speak <laughs> in my southern tongue? Okay, so outside of the the Sloss Fright Furnace Festival, the Halloween yeah. Festival, they do a lot of other stuff. You've got... Um, they've got a jazz festival in August of every year. The Taste of Fourth Avenue Jazz Festival. Um, they've got the Southern Heritage Festival. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, a bunch of stuff like that. So, looks like they have a lot of stuff to do outside of just the Sloss Furnaces. But again, the Sloss Furnaces is a... And it's open to the public. That's just weird to me. It seems um, like there'd be a hazard there. Well, I would imagine they've got to have it roped off and... And cleaned up in such a way that, you know, you're not going to fall. Fall down to where old Slag Wormwood find, found his final resting place at the bottom of that ore. Now, <laughs> I, I was not thrilled with the Birmingham, Alabama, um, Background, well, not background, but but the things to do in Birmingham. Uh-huh. Nothing on it was like, oh, that's my cup of tea. But the thing that I was thrilled about, yes, Birmingham, Alabama, Saul's Barbecue. <laughs> yes. Now, Saul's Barbecue. Can I talk a little bit about oh, it? You can. Lord, 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 have mercy on my soul. According to Google. Now, I looked this up on the Google, the Saw's Barbecue. Now, is my voice bothering you? No. Do you find my tone offensive? Yeah. I'm a southern gentleman. Uh-huh. When I talk about barbecue and when I talk about fun facts about Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. Now, <laughs> according to this here, you got 4.6 stars, 124 Google reviews. Now, Saw's Barbecue is located at 1008 Oxmoor Road in Homewood, Alabama, which is kind of like Moore, Oklahoma. All right. It's a small suburb of Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> okay. Now, the phone number is 205. If you want to call something in, 879-1937. Okay. <laughs> okay now, now, the popular items stop. No. You don't want me to talk about popular items? No. That's okay. not how we do the show. Okay. Probably. We also don't read their phone number. I'm sorry. Because we're not doing a radio show where we've got Saul's Barbecue as the sponsor. We will nix, of course. We will nix the phone number from this if, show. No, we're not going to. We, we will not do that. In post-editing. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will not do that in post-editing. Okay. Uh, but one of the things that mm-hmm. I saw on their menu. Yes. That actually physically made me hungry. And it's not really barbecue. What is it? The Carolina dog. Oh, man. Tell me more about this Dude, kid, the, dog. Do you know what a Carolina, Carolina dog is? Um, I'm assuming it's got probably, it's probably going to have, 
if I'm guessing, some slaw on it. It will. It and will. Chili. Oh boy, howdy. Yeah. So you get um, a good hot dog to begin with, not the the junk that your that your uh, parents bought you. You know, right, right, for right, right. Ninety nine cents a ten pack or whatever. Um, but start off with a good dog, good bun. Then you're going chili, not not hot, but you know, kind of medium chili, mm-hmm. and then coleslaw. Now, something you probably didn't know. I bet I did. Garden and Gun named Saw's Barbecue one of the best in the South for their burgers. That's a publication. It's number one on Paula Dean's list of ten best barbecue places in America. Yeah. According to New York Times, the saw sauce is the saw's sauce is just incredible. Right. And it's been top on their Alabama Eats. Now, Best Barbecue in America, Men's Journal yeah. says Best Barbecue in America. I love barbecue. Agreed. If you had to rate, like, talking about barbecue mm-hmm. on your list of favorite foods, where would you put barbecue? Uh, man, uh, favorites always give me a... a, a Perplex me because barbecue right now, Mm -hmm. number one on my list. Okay. When I'm not hungry and talking and thinking about barbecue, it might be something else. Okay. But it's, it's high up there. I would, I will put some miles on the car Mm -hmm. to go to a good barbecue joint. Now, you know, Saul's barbecue isn't just barbecue. I did not know that. They have a Saul's soul kitchen. They also have a Saul's juke joint as well so it's i mean they have diversified their portfolio (laughs) for sure now for me up without looking even getting into the menu i'll tell you right now uh the the only thing i order when i go to barbecue ribs that's it why uh i'm just a rib guy i like the rib burnt ends Mm, yeah but Brisket. Brisket? Eh. It's good. Smoked turkey? Good. I'm not a smoked but turkey. If guy. you let me try your ribs. Now, I'm not big on the St. Louis rib. I don't like the little St. Louis ribs. I like the big pork ribs, beef ribs. Mm-hmm. That's what I like. Now, there is a restaurant in Oklahoma that we're never, ever going to get to, but they don't serve bread as an appetizer. They serve ribs. They serve ribs. Why are we not going to get to it? There's nothing. I don't think there's anything even remotely close to Ken's Steakhouse. That uh, is it still open? It is still open. I think that's the only thing in that town that is open. That and the police station. Uh, I think they have a gas station. No, but Saul's Barbecue consistently gets top ratings. I mean, it's got 120 over 120 reviews. Everybody loves it. If you're in the area. Of Homewood, Alabama, which again is a suburb of. Don't be confused here. Don't get it twisted now. All right. You know, go to Saz Barbecue. Tell them that the Travel Oddities podcast sent you to Saz Barbecue. Tell them they should should get an advertisement with. And you will not get a discount for mentioning our podcast. They may charge you double. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, Saz Barbecue, their food looks phenomenal. We, you know what? We talk about food every show. Right. We had a Travelodities Sausage Fest road trip planned. Things happened. <laughs> you threatened to go to a barbecue joint without me. Yes, I did. Um, we still need to do it. We still need to do Butcher's Barbecue. We do. We need to find a time maybe this summer. Yes, we do. Like, well, I mean, we made a promise. We we're running out of time on the promise to the to the listeners. On we are. We we said we're going to go do a straight up live show, live show, or, and we and we lied. We did a straight up lie show. No, because we still have time. We do have time. We have not lied yet. If we don't no. get our asses in gear, we will be liars soon. But here's the problem: middle of the summer, man. I would I would prefer to do a haunting because at night when it's not 110 degrees. Okay. Because dude, right now it's 80 something degrees outside with nine 99 humidity. Agree. So, anyway, go to Sauce Barbecue. That's uh Birmingham. 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 
Alabama. Can can I Birmingham? Birmingham. Birmingham. You say Birmingham. Repeat after me. Birmingham. You got to go Birmingham. Birmingham. Alabama. Alabama. Okay, there you go. All righty. Hop on the phone, guys. 7865-Oddity. Give mm-hmm. us a call. Leave us a voicemail. We'd like to hear what you sound like. You can use one of those voice alteration things, too, if you want. I don't care. Yeah, don't be shy. Absolutely not. I mean, if you don't, and even if you don't want us, if you don't want us to play your message on the air, we'll transcribe it. Or we can, we can do the, the tone adjustments. Yeah. And, and make you sound like a freaking pipsqueak. <laughs> if you want. But anyway, uh, feedback always. Yes. Um, look us up at travelodities.com on Facebook at Travel Oddities Podcasts. Or as Lobo says, we're on Twitter. Twitter, Twitter at travel underscore oddities. Are you making fun of Lobo? I like those guys over there at Project Archivist. <laughs> Hello, you, you know Lobo and Rogen. What, did you just do like a Lobo low blow? Yeah, kind of. I, kind I, of I, I love those guys though. Um, yeah, we're here at the uh, Project Archivist. Yeah, I didn't realize that Lobo was from Manitoc or wherever the hell you're. You always from Connecticut. He likes sausages. Ask him. Ask him what? If he likes sausages. Um, he he does not like sausages. He does like sausages. No. There's a picture. I don't know if it's, or is that Rogen's that's Facebook? Rogen's that's got an Facebook. empty package of, Rogen, you're setting yourself up by having an empty package of bratwursts. You know I'm coming for you. Have <laughs> you seen the he had like a full-on sausage fest? <laughs> he had a full-on sausage fest. <laughs> anyway, yes, uh... Also, just a quick shout out. We try to do it every week. Check out our, our, our friends over at Project Archivist. Really good guys. Uh, Lobo and, uh, Rogen over there at Project Archivist. We, uh, we try to scratch each other's backs when we can. Absolutely. So, um, lastly. Yes. iTunes. Yes. We need some reviews. We need some five stars. I mean, unless there's something strange going on that we're not aware of, people are listening to the show. A lot of people. A lot of people are. I mean, in my estimation. I mean, like unless it. they're listening to it while they're murdering someone, and it's just something in the background, like we're like somehow spiritually coaching them to murder. Can you please give us a review? <laughs> <laughs> You've got Brett Began, guys. Okay, so that's the show. That's the show. This has been Travel Out of These Podcasts. I'm Brett. And I'm Harley. Peace. Peace.